Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I am your host, Mark Fusco. And before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. So at the end of last year, I reviewed six different Cabernet Sauvignons from Chile. To start off this year, I'm going to review eight different Sauvignon Blancs from Chile. This is a free sample provided to me, and I have no restrictions on how to review it. All right, I've got that out of the way. If you want to get a more detailed explanation of Chilean wine, then check out my first episode of the Cab series last year. That's episode 99, the, about the Miguel Torres Cordillera de las Cabernet Sauvignon. The link will be in the description below. Now, this is the sixth wine in the series. It comes from Viña Tabali. Let's get their background. They were founded by Guillermo Luxic. Now, let's get some background on him first. So Guillermo wasn't from a winemaking or wine growing family. His father, Andronico, was the son of a Croatian immigrant father and a Bolivian mother. Andronico became a very wealthy businessman starting in the 1950s with copper mining. Over the years, he invested in other companies and formed the uh, Quinenco Holding Company. Guillermo would eventually succeed his father at Quinenco in 1982. Through him, the company continued to expand to various industries, eventually making him Chile's richest man. In the early 1990s, Guillermo bought land near the Enchanted Valley and would plant vines in 1993 in what would become his first vineyard, the Tabali Vineyard, located in the Lamari Valley. So it wasn't really known for winemaking at the time. So why here? Well, the website has this to say about it. His mother, Anya Craig, studied at the Amelia Erezeriz school there, and from early childhood, he used to visit the area with family and friends. He was very sentimental about his mother and once said, I want to have land in Ovalle because it's a fascinating area with its climate and temperature, and it's also very pretty. The town of Ovalle is not to be confused with the low Ovalle sector in the Casablanca Dio to the south from last week's wine. In 2002, the winery was founded and the first Tabali wines were released. In 2009, the winery acquired land next to the Frey Jorge uh, Fray Jorge National Park, which is part of the UNESCO World Biosphere Reserve. This land would become the vineyard, and the grapes for this wine come from, uh, the Talanay Vineyard. It's a short 12 kilometers or seven and a half miles east of the Pacific Ocean. From what I can tell, it's probably the closest vineyard to the ocean in Lamari. In 2010, they bought the former El Bosque Vineyard in the Rio Hurtado Dio, which is part of the Andes Climatic Zone. They changed the name to Rio Hurtado Vineyard. Unfortunately, Guillermo passed away from lung cancer in 2013. His son, Nicolas, took over the operation of the winery at this point. Under Nicolas, the winery acquired their fourth vineyard, the Dom or DOM vineyard, exclusively planted to Cabernet Sauvignon in the Maipo Valley. This valley is the entire metropolitan district of the capital of Santiago. This vineyard is in the coastal zone of the Melipilla Dio, making it a cool climate cab. It took a bit of super sleuthing to find all these vineyards, by the way, but I nailed them, at least I think I did. For this wine, the vineyard is heavily influenced by the Pacific Ocean by a constant cool breeze. This breeze keeps the vineyard significantly cooler than the rest of the valley, especially being much farther north approaching the Atacama Desert. Not quite there, but it's closer to the Atacama than the Aconcagua Valley to the south. Just by just a few miles, though. The harvest here averages two to three weeks later than the rest of the valley because of the climate. The soil here is mostly made of limestone. This is different than the mostly granite soils we've seen so far and we'll see in the other wines. We'll see the soil again later, too. Let's get the full stats of the wine. The 2021 Vigne Tabali Talonet Sauvignon Blanc suggested retail price $24 from the Valle de Limari Dio, Talonet Vineyard, 100% Sauvignon Blanc. Soil is limestone. The yield is 2.43 tons per acre, or as they put it, 6,000 6, kilograms per hectare. It's hand harvested, cold fermentation in stainless steel tanks. The lees stirred as necessary. The ABV is 13.0%. The pH is 2.88, the lows of all eight wines in the series by far. The total acidity is 7.01 grams per liter. The RS is 1.2 grams per liter. 
This should be a ripper of a wine built for acid heads. I am super excited to open this up. Let's get into the wine. Remember I talked about like, you know, Riesling at like under three. Well, this is like under three on the pH. So it should be super intense. And you know, a seven gram per liter, uh, seven grams per liter for the, for the acidity. This is a hard one to get through the cork. I didn't want to bend the, I didn't want to bend the needle because then I'd have to go out and buy one. All righty. I'm excited to try this wine. So yeah, the vineyard is like really cool. Um, where I found this up in the Lamari Valley. Um, it did take quite a bit of time for me to find the vineyard. Well, I mean, yes and no. Like if you know how far away the vineyard is from the ocean, it's like the only vineyard like around. Um, so it, it's not that hard to find, but at the same time, finding all the vineyards for this winery, uh, they had enough information on their website through telling you where it is, kind of giving you an idea of like location, like specific location and getting some pictures. That's how I find a lot of these vineyards. All right, so I'd call it like a medium aromatics. Oh, real quick. Somebody thought it was 96 points. Just saying. I'm not sure who, who these guys are. The Des, Des, De Corchados. De Corchados. Not sure who they are. But they think it's 96 points. So let's, let's see if it is 96 point wine. I don't know any other ratings. I never look up ratings. Or if I see them by accident, I don't memorize them. So yeah, it's like a medium aromatic. So nothing really jumping out on the glass, out of the glass. Just smells like a wine, honestly, right now. Um, I get a bit of a Sauvignon Blanc-ness to it, but it's not like in my face. Yeah, let's just get it on the palate. Mmm. Hello. I, I'm not going to say that it's a 96 point wine necessarily, but I see where they're going with this. It's a really well made wine. It, you know, for me, it's more like it's just, it has something different. So that's where that mm came from. It was like, wow, there's some, something cool about this wine that I haven't had yet in the series so far. Like I mentioned in one of the other videos, I'm doing these kind of out of order. So I have four others, even though this is wine number six, I have four others to do. I explained why one of the other videos about the colors of the label and the blue screen, the green screen, whatever. But with that said, so you get the bell pepper, the green bell pepper, jalapeno thing. But you know, you also get like this kind of white pepper thing going on. There's like this spice component that I don't normally get from, from Sauvignon Blanc. And with that said, the white pepper, that makes me think of Gruner Veltliner, which is like the only wine you can pair with asparagus. And that brings me to thinking asparagus now. Um, the first wine in the series, I remember I, I said something about asparagus. I saw where they're going with that. I kind of get that savory asparagus type of thing, white pepper. There's almost a Gruner Veltliner thing kind of going on here. It's kind of groovy. I just want to say that. But it's, it's unmistakably Sauvignon Blanc. It's more savory than anything else. There's a grapefruit quality to it. There's an orange quality on the citrus. Uh, lemon, lime, really a lot of lemon, lime. You know, in some ways I say it's unmistakably Sauvignon Blanc. In some ways, if I was getting this wine blind, I could be in this kind of, usually there's this like Bermuda Triangle of wines of Gruner, Albarino, and Pinot Grigio. And then sometimes I'll throw Sauvignon Blanc in there because there might be some things that, that so this is, this is kind of like the square, the Bermuda square, um, or the Bermuda rectangle, <laughs> instead of the triangle. Um, it kind of plays in that, in that zone, but it, if I was getting this blind, I'd be like, nah, this is not, of the, it's not those three. It's gotta be Sauvignon Blanc, but I would not know where to take it. It's really cool. It, it's kind of just out there, kind of a little bit different. And also remembering that this is a 2.88 pH, right? And my mouth is watering a lot, but there's a balance to this. Yeah. Acidity is intense. It's a high acid wine. Uh, and it's only 1.2 grams per liter on the sugar. So it's not, it's not like it's, you know, it's not like there's, there's a significantly higher amount of RS to balance things. It's just in balance. 
There's almost like this exotic flower thing going on too. There's an exoticness to this wine. And if I'm thinking about having food with this, I want stuff that's kind of outside, outside the norm. Um, I don't eat seafood, but this absolutely, absolutely could go with probably some really cool seafood stuff and all the wines in the series could. Um, but I can see having some unusual types of, of, um, of food and some of this I've never had before, but I kind of just feel like I could have it with, you know, whatever, certain types of proteins, only just because it's, there's an exoticness to it. I mean, yeah, you could, you have it with like, you know, chicken and pork, um, that type of thing. You know, could you have it with the goulash that I talked about with one of the other episodes? No, because it doesn't have that, that red and yellow pepper and that, that, that sweet pepper type thing. You couldn't do it with that, but can you do it with like enchiladas? Yeah, you could, but I think some of the other ones would be better with something like that. Um, I don't know if I would do like barbecue with this, but I, I would do something along the lines of, I mean, you could have like a, a rice dish going on with this, something a little bit, maybe some Asian spice stuff, some, you know, uh, not necessarily Chinese food or Americanized Chinese food, but you could do it maybe with something like, a, like Thai, maybe you could do some pho with this. Um, you probably could do a seafood pho with this, which, uh, I mean, sorry, I just don't like seafood. Um, you could probably do something like that with it. Uh, anything with um, the sriracha sauce. Not, not be, you know, the thing is a hot, something hot with this much acidity and really no residual sugar might be a clash, but I think the flavors, if you had the flavors of that type of stuff, I would go with that. Yeah, I could see this with more exotic spiced food. Um, uh, uh, there's this restaurant that I go to when I'm at Texas when I'm volunteering. It's like the first night. It's a Pakistani restaurant and some of the food from there, that would be, this would be killer with that. Mm. Middle Eastern food, you could do that. Like uh, Kafka uh, meat and uh, yeah, the spices from that and this wine would be great. I would do something more along those lines rather than like your just traditional Sauvignon Blanc foods. Yeah, it's really good. Okay. Sure, 96 points. I agree with whoever these guys are. I also, if they said it was 93, I'd be, yeah, you know. It's a very well-made wine that's in the 90 to 100 point range and depends on who you are, what the, what kind of day you're having, and what what your preferences are. And I can totally see this in that high 90 range if, if, if that's your thing. Absolutely. All right, that's gonna do it for today's show. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and then tell your friends and then we'll see you next time with like my little drop of wine. <laughs>